Okay, so today it is winter time, and what do I like to do? I like to evaluate products this time of year. So today I'm going to look at something useful. This is an ultrasonic cleaner, and it's a big one. Well, a big one as far as countertop units go. This holds 30 liters in the basin. And I bought this on Amazon full price. Nobody sponsored me. I did not get it for free in order to get a review. I'm just going to show it to you. And one of the things I thought I would look at here is how well it cleans parts that are left inside your aquarium. If you're a fish tank enthusiast, you're going to want to clean your parts every now and again. This basket has little rubber insulators on the feet because we don't want anything in direct contact with the basin. These are the dimensions. It is 20 and 1 half inches long. These are the outside dimensions, of course. The width is right at 12 inches, just a tiny bit over, 12 and 16th. And from the surface it sits on all the way to the top, it's just over 13 inches, and the unit itself is 12 and a half inches tall. The width is 11 inches inside. The length is 19 and 3 eighths all the way to the bottom. And the depth is right at seven and a half inches all the way to the top. So really only about six and a half useful inches because you wouldn't fill it all the way to the top. So those are the dimensions and there is a drain valve on it. Three eighths of an inch valve, it has threads on it. So you can hook up a tube or a drain hose, anything you want, but that'll be the size. It's a ball valve, which is full bore. When you first run water through it, some kind of grease comes out. So be ready for that. 30 liter unit, it says model JPS TAC 100A. And then these are the specs, of course. It's a 40 kilohertz, which is 40,000 cycles per second. Anything over 20,000 cycles per second is ultrasonic. And the on off switch, stainless steel handles here. Put this on a solid surface because you're going to fill it up. I think it was funny here that on the side, instead of caution, it says admonition! Exclamation point. Pretty funny. So, and then it's digitally controlled. You cannot control the power of the ultrasonic pulse, so there's no amplitude control. All you have is temperature control, and that's in Celsius. And you have a timer, minutes and seconds. And you can set that up. It's preset to five minutes, and that's what we're going to use for the initial test. It also cautions you not to use it unless it's at least three quarters full. If you run it empty, you're going to mess it up, and do not fill it more than within an inch of the top. And when you look at the interior, you can see that there's like a double basin and it starts one inch down. So there's that. And we're going to move along here and show you the bottom. Sheet metal has been cut out, so there's lots of venting here. There is a big fan, much like a computer fan that circulates air through it to keep your circuit board from burning out, of course. Underneath there are transducers that take the electrical energy and convert it to mechanical energy and you have that piezoelectric effect which is really exciting to know about but I'm not going to tell you those details now. But that's how we get the waves into the basin. Of course there's a basket that goes with it. A lot of people want to know what size this basket is and that's to make sure that your components do not rest on the actual interior surface of your unit. You don't want to wear that away, you don't want to rub on your components. 18 and roughly 3 eighths in length but all the way to the bottom it would be 18 straight. And then we have uh, 10 and it looks like 5 eighths here in width. And then how deep is the basket? Let's see what that is. We are at right at 5 inches. So there's that. The basket is pretty nice. You can put a bunch of stuff in it. But I'm going to show you how to not mess up all the water here in a minute. And the openings, for those who are curious about parts falling through, are exactly a half inch square. Also, when you set up your unit, make sure that valve overhangs the counter or your table so you can put a bucket under it to collect the water if you're using it inside the way I am. And I also preheat the water that I pour into it because the unit uses about 800 watts when it's heating the water and it will control the heat really well. So here it is. It's ready to go. Now, would you put dish soap or bleach or whatever your cleansing solution is in this entire basin? I would rather not. So I'm going to show you how I handle that in a minute. First, I want to show you my fish tank. 54 gallon fish tank, and that's my Mark V dive helmet made out of plastic. And it's got slime on it. And this is some really hard to scrub off stuff, by the way. The angelfish are happy to see it go. They're hoping that we clean things up for them. There are also plastic plants in here, and we're going to get to those too. But this is the before shot. Let's look at that thing. And uh, it's covered in crud. So we're going to see how well the ultrasonic cleaner cleans that up. Now the cool thing is that's why I wanted a 30 liter tank because I want to be able to put bigger things in it. And I put it in these Ziploc bags and then fill the bag with water. So if you want to add detergent, 
if you're putting Dawn dish soap in there or if you're going to put a percentage of bleach or something like that, put it in the bag. Why do it to an entire basin? Because the sound is going to travel right through the plastic bag and continue on to the component that you put in the bag. You're going to turn it on there. That's also where your fuse is located. And then uh, again, remember it's preset at five minutes, but you can run it to any setting you want. You can run it for an hour if you want to. And it's set at 50 degrees Celsius, and it held that temperature really well, by the way. Pay attention. Admonition, like it says there. Also, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, don't stick your hands in this water. Your hands will conduct those cavitating bubbles, and you can get some interesting problems going on. So keep your hands out of the water when this thing is running. So right now, inside that bag, we started off with just water. And you can see micro bubbles. You see bubbles traveling, but the bubbles that are really doing the work are microscopic. You don't actually see them. And what happens is where the ultrasound impacts the surface of this little dive helmet, that's where the uh, cavitation takes place. And that's where it starts to break away anything that's attached to the surface. And it's more effective than you might think. And we're going to find out at the end of the video. Also, here's one of the plastic plants, which if you keep uh, tropical fish or if you have plastic plants underwater or any kind of plastic ornaments, they tend to get grit and grime and, of course, algae into the little teeny details here. So why bother scrubbing all that out? I thought we would drop this in the ultrasonic cleaner and see what happens to it, how well that happens. So ultrasound, when it hits the air, the surface here, about over 90% reflective at that surface, but it does travel in every direction through the water, so don't bother trying to turn your components around and try to orient them towards the transducers that are coming through the bottom there because the water will reflect, refract, and redirect the sound into every angle possible, and it will get into that uh, plastic component even where it connects. If you're using metal tongs like this, remember the ultrasound is going to travel right up through them, so limit your exposure there too. Grab things quick, get them out of there. Don't hold things underwater and hang onto those tongs. You're going to find that your fingers are going to vibrate. Now for kicks, I took my dive watch. I dropped it in right on top of one of those bags and look what happened. It actually starts. It looks like it's doing nothing, but then I started seeing these little enamel painted numbers from the bezel start floating around in the water. So this thing actually took the enamel off the surface of the watch. So I don't care about that. I don't read the bezel anyway. And of course it's embossed so you can still see it. But I thought it was really interesting that even enamel paint on the bezel of a dive watch that has been in service for over 19 years uh, comes off in this ultrasonic cleaner. So if you want to clean something like that, it works fantastic. Plus if you've got these web straps for your wrists that are designed to go on the outside of your wetsuit, it also will clean and sanitize those. So if you wanted to put this in a Ziploc baggie of alcohol or something, that would work fantastic. Now notice that the debris and stuff that came off of these components we put in there was contained in the bags. Great idea, right? I like that story because now when we pull the bags out, look how clean the basin is. And there's that lip that you can see that's with one inch of the top, never fill beyond that. So I just took it over to the sink, we dumped everything out, and we went, rinsed these products off, and I'm going to show you what happened. Look at the plastic plant. It is perfect. Now, I did this actually longer than five minutes. We did three cycles at five minutes each, and each time I looked at them until it was completely clean. But even these little plastic insert connectors and stuff were totally cleaned out. So when we rinse this off and put it back in the fish tank, it looks like a brand new plastic ornament. So this is absolutely perfect for those synthetic plants that a lot of you like to keep in your fish tanks like I do. So that's a win, but I want to show you my dive helmet. Look what happened. It cleaned it too well. This dive helmet is supposed to look like antique bronze, but it actually took the paint off. It didn't just take the algae off. So if you leave it in too long, I put this dive helmet in there for actually 30 minutes overall, and I wanted to see if it really would take the paint off, and it did. So if you are familiar with aquarium fixtures and you know of a good paint that is safe for ornamentation inside a freshwater fish tank, please put that down in the comments section. I would love to learn about it. That's what I'm going to be looking up next. I hope you like this review. It works. Get one if you want to. The link is down in the video description. Thanks for watching.